You might not believe this, but I wasn't the most popular kid in high school. No, I wasn't Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell. I was more like Screech. Okay, seriously, I wasn't that bad, but you can ask my wife, if she would have known me in high school, would she have dated me? So babe, would you have dated me in high school? <laughs> uh, no. I mean, come on, look at this picture. Who wouldn't want to date this kid? He's hot. So here's the truth. I don't really remember a lot of high school and I don't know if that's just because I'm trying to block it out. I don't want to think about high school. I don't want to think about high school. But it was funny because I wrote this blog post and the blog post was titled seven personal finance skills that I wish I would have learned in high school. And it wasn't two days after I hit publish on that blog post and started to promote it on social media, I got an email from my consumer education high school teacher. And this is what the email had to say. Jeff, after reading your Good Financial Sense blog post this morning, seven personal finance lessons I wish everyone would have learned in high school, I am curious if your post is fiction or nonfiction. If it is indeed nonfiction, as you have referenced many of your own personal experiences, then I seem to have a different recollection of your high school days. Nothing like getting called out by your high school teacher, right? So my teacher went on to say, maybe because of the topic was boring or maybe she's a horrible teacher, which I did reply and say, no, you're not a horrible teacher. I like you. I don't think she gave me an A though. I think I got a B. Maybe I don't like you. Just kidding, just kidding, a B's good. But the fact of the matter remains, I don't remember what was taught in that class. I don't remember any basic personal finance skills being taught to me in high school. So maybe they were taught to me, but if I didn't learn them, if I didn't absorb them and apply them to my life, then what difference does it make? So I don't wanna sit here and lecture on maybe different tactics that could have been used where I could have absorbed some of that information, but I firmly believe that high school students deserve this, they need this. So why do they need this? It's reported that two thirds of Americans couldn't scrounge up a thousand dollars if they had to, or would have extreme difficulty doing so. So that means if they had an emergency, if they had to buy new tires or fix a car engine or buy a new water heater, and they had to come up with a thousand bucks, they couldn't do it. It's also reported that four fifths of every single American has some sort of debt, whether that be student loan debt, credit card debt, auto debt, some sort of debt that they're paying interest on and not building wealth. A study done by the National Endowment of Financial Education reported that 24% of respondents only had basic financial literacy skills. But here's the kicker, 69% of them gave themselves a high assessment, like they know what they're doing with their money. Do you see the problem here? 69% think they got it, but 24% don't. That's the reality. And of that 24%, only 8% had basic high school financial literacy skills, 8%. Now do you understand why I think this needs to be taught? Personal finance skills that need to be taught in high school. Do you hear me? Please tell me you're listening. Open the ears, open the ears and listen. All right, without further ado, these are the seven basic personal finance skills that I wish that I would have learned in high school. All right, number one, I wish I were to learn how credit cards and interest rate work. Now, if you don't know this about me, my dad struggled with credit card debt, my mom struggled with credit card debt, and guess what happened to me? Ding, ding, ding. Yes, I struggled with credit card debt. Before I even graduated high school, I had over $20,000 of credit card debt because I didn't know what I was doing. I had no clue what I was doing with credit cards. I was just swiping away and just racking up the interest. And here's the other thing that I really didn't quite understand, especially when it comes to interest rates. One of the first credit cards I got was a department store credit card. And I think I had like a $500 limit. Well, it took me about two weeks to max that puppy out. And I was making the minimum payment, which was like 15 or 20 bucks a week. If I would have made the minimum payment trying to pay off that $500 and never used it again, it would have taken me like almost seven years to pay it off completely. 
Seven years to pay off some jeans and some stupid shirts that I probably wouldn't be wearing a year after that. Now, thankfully, most credit card statements are going to show you if you make the minimum payment, how long it's gonna take you to pay off that debt. But most people don't get it. They just think, oh, I'm just gonna swipe it, make the minimum payment, and I'm good. But what's the point? If you were gonna charge $500, do you wanna take seven years to pay it off to where $500 is your principal and $1,500 is the interest on that $500? That doesn't make good financial sense. You see what I did there? A blog, financial sense? Yeah, I did that. The crazy thing is that this doesn't just apply to high school students. A couple years ago, I was asked to speak at my alma mater to a personal finance class. And at the end of the class, I was talking to the teacher and asking him, you know, what are some of the things that you're seeing your students struggle with, you know, with basic personal finance skills? And he talked about credit cards and interest rates that they just didn't quite understand. And one of the biggest traps that he saw his students get into are these rent to own companies, you know, where you can rent to own a couch or a PlayStation. And just like a credit card, you're making the minimum payment. But what you don't realize is the interest rate is insane, insane to where if you're getting a PlayStation that maybe is normally like 500 bucks with interest, the interest rates are charging, it's gonna cost you like two to three grand. Now I know that an Xbox is fun, but is it $3,000 fun? No. So yes, high school students need to learn the basics of credit cards and how interest rates work. The second thing they also need to know is understanding how to build your credit, or maybe more importantly, how to not ruin your credit. I didn't understand the basics at all when it came to my credit score or how to build my credit or what a credit report was. And I shared some of these stories in another video I did where I'm talking about how to boost your credit score. But one of the things I shared was a story about an intern that I had that was in a similar situation. His parents told him to not get a credit card, to not, he, to just to stay away from credit cards because they're the devil and he's gonna get into debt and they're worried about him. But what happened though is that he had no credit history, so his credit score was actually low, like it was bad low, like super bad, super bad low, in the low 600s. So he took out a secured credit card, paid that off every single month and boosted his credit score over 100 points in nine months. So guess what? He wasn't taught how credit scores work, so he had no idea. And I was the same way. I can't remember what triggered me to check my credit score, but when I did, I was like, what? What is wrong with my credit score? So that's what led me to checking my credit report, and that's when I learned that I had a gym membership that was marked delinquent even though I didn't even live near this gym anymore because I moved away. But it had been on my credit report for over a year and it was killing my credit score. I consider myself lucky that I discovered that, but I can't tell you how many people don't or when they do find out it's too late. Whether they're in the process of buying a house or buying a car or just securing some type of loan, renting an apartment, and all of a sudden, bam, they find out their credit score is <laughs> All right, number three is budgeting basics. I wish I was taught the basics of budgeting, but I get it, budgeting, that's just boring. That's just a snooze fest. <sighs> budgeting's so tiring. <sighs> budgeting's boring. But here's a fact. You cannot build wealth. You cannot grow and build wealth if you don't understand the basics of budgeting. The simple principles of building wealth is knowing where your money's coming from and where it's going. And I can't tell you how many people are wasting money on things that they don't care about, things that they don't need. So ask yourself, would you rather pay your monthly Netflix bill or take a European vacation? I don't know, Jeff, I kinda like the Netflix and chill, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So most people look at a budget and they just feel like it's limiting and restricting and preventing them from doing the things that they wanna do. But the reality is that it helps you discover those things that you're paying on that you're just pissing money away instead of investing that or applying it to the things in your life that matter. So in addition to budgeting basics, you know, maybe just some simple budgeting strategies would have been nice because like, for example, I didn't learn about the cash budgeting system until I think I was like in my mid twenties or later twenties. So how the cash envelope system works is that each week when you get paid, you put all your money into different envelopes that are earmarked for certain things, certain bills, certain expenses for that week. So whether that be your groceries, your electricity bill, your car payment, going out to eat, whatever those items are, your money is already spoken for before you spend it. And once that money is gone inside the envelope, 
you're done. So you're not spending any more money on whatever that item is. And this is just one basic strategy that I've seen a lot of people have success with, but once again, it wasn't taught to me in high school, so I had no idea. Number four is balancing a checkbook. And I get it, you're a millennial, you don't balance a checkbook, you don't even have a checkbook because you do all online banking. But some way, somehow, you have to be able to know what checks you have written, you have to know how much you still have left in your checking account because guess what? Here's how I used to balance my checkbook. I used to balance my checkbook by going to the ATM, taking withdrawal, and then finding out what the balance was. And I also hoped that I wouldn't over withdraw my account because that happened a few times. Please let there be money in my account. Please let there be money in my account. I'm not making this up. This is how I used to balance my checkbook because no one showed me what to do. No one showed me the right way. And not understanding the basics of balancing my checkbook crushed me a year after I graduated high school. I was 19, I had a good paying job working in the mall, I was working out and I wanted to go get some supplements, you know, to help get my swole on. So I walked into GNC and I bought myself some creatine powder and some protein powder. I wrote a check and I walked out of there feeling like a rock star. So I walked into GNC, wrote a check, walked out with my supplements, ready to hit the gym and get swole. You see these guns, baby? Sun's out, guns out, mm-mm. <laughs> but there was one little problem. The check that I wrote, and I actually wrote another check that day, guess what? Bounced. 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 It bounced. So what happens when you bounce a check? You get an overdraft charge. Sometimes the place you wrote a check charges you a fee. Your bank charges you a fee. So not only was my checking account overdrawn, I had to pay $75 in overdraft charges. Do you know how much that sucked when you're 19 and you're already broke? It sucks. It sucks. I can remember going to my dad and just telling him the story, like looking for him to tell me he's going to fix the problem or just tell me it's gonna be okay. He's like, son, you bounced the check. Like, that's what, what do you want me to do? And I remember I, seriously, I cried. I was 19 years old, I was crying because I was like, how am I gonna do this? I didn't know, I, I had no idea, I was lost. I was a poor soul, I was 19. Give me a break, give me a break, I was 19. But here's the truth. If I would have had some basic skills from a high school teacher, from a high school class showing me how not to do that, then maybe, maybe I wouldn't have wrote a bad check. Then again, I probably would have because you know, that's just how I was. Who knows, who knows, I don't know. All right, number five and number six, 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 six. yeah. We're gonna roll up together. First one is compounding interest. I wish that I would have been taught the basics of compounding interest. Now here's the thing that I don't get. I wasn't taught how compounding interest worked until I was a junior, a junior in college. I had no idea if you invest $100 a month and you average 8% return, after 30 years, you're gonna have tens of thousands of dollars. I just, I was oblivious to it. I 100% firmly believe that if I would have known that, I would have started investing a whole lot sooner. Now maybe it wouldn't have been 100 bucks a month, but it could have been 25 to 50 bucks a month. Remember, I had a job, I was a rock star, you know, bouncing checks, but I still had some money after that whole check debacle to start investing. Now one of the coolest stories that I think helps illustrate this, especially to a high school kid, on the power of compounding interest is the magical penny. Now how this was introduced, so you have this magical penny that doubles in value every 30 days. And which one would you rather choose? The magical penny that doubles every day for 30 days or $2 million. Which one would you choose? Now most people are going to choose the $2 million because that's a lot of money, especially if you pay me in cash, $2 million cash? Okay, I'll take it. But with compounding interest and a penny that doubles in value every day for 30 days is going to trump that $2 million mark. How much is it? I wanna tell you, but you're gonna have to watch this video that shows how much the magical penny grows over 30 days. Teaser alert, I'm teasing you, I'm teasing you. So if I would have been taught how compounding interest works, that would have made me want to invest. So number six is understanding the basics of investing or how the stock market works. I didn't learn anything about stocks, mutual funds, ETFs, none of that. I didn't know how to go out and buy a mutual fund or a stock or an ETF, I, I had no idea. Funny enough, it was in high school where I learned about the Roth IRA 
but it wasn't because of a teacher. It was because of a friend of mine, another high school student that told me about the Roth IRA. And after that, the word Roth IRA wasn't even talked about again until I was a junior in college. And that's just because I was a finance major. What about everybody that's not a finance major? Do you think they're talking about the Roth IRA with their major? Doubt it. But even more than the Roth IRA, I wish I would've been taught something about the 401k. I can't tell you how many times I've come across an individual that has a job and has been working there for a year, maybe longer, and they haven't signed up for their 401k yet. And the reason is, is because they don't know what to do. They don't know how to do it. Yes, they can sign a piece of paper and sign up, but they don't know how to choose the investments. And most everybody that gets a job is going to be offered some sort of 401k. So if you have no idea how it works or what types of investments are included in that, then chances are you're not going to do it. So some sort of introduction about the 401k, the types of investments, typically mutual funds inside that 401k, and man, some info on the Roth IRA would be amazing if that was shared whenever I was a high school student. One of the cool opportunities that I had was with the client and their 16 year old son. Their son was mowing lawns, you know, he was hustling his butt off. He had saved over $500 and he wanted to start invest, but he didn't know how to do it. So his mom brought him in and I showed him how to buy mutual funds, how to research and pick good mutual funds. And then I showed him that if he started with $500 and added $25 a month for the next 30 plus years, that his $500 would have grown to be over $522,000. That kid was blown away because like me, he didn't know about compounding interest. He didn't know about the stock market. He didn't know about mutual funds or how to buy individual stocks. He had no clue. No one had ever shown him. And I promise you, yeah, he was only 16. I doubt that he would have got the information I shared with him in the office that day. All right, number seven, the last one. I wish a personal finance skill that would have been taught to me in high school would have been how to start a business, how to start and run a successful business. Now, I'm probably asking a lot here because, you know, it is high school and they're trying to teach you, you know, arithmetic and home education and gym or whatever else we learn in high school. But just imagine if we were taught some of the basics when it comes to starting a business. And we're talking the bare bone basics. Some of the basics that could be taught are how to do customer service, how to do customer service right, you know, how to balance a budget, how do you market your business. In essence, a lot of these are just basic human skills of networking, learning how to shake hands, learning how to say something and follow through, how to actually speak truth, and building character by doing what you say you're going to do. How many people don't do that nowadays? A lot. Now, one of the cool things that one of the local schools was doing in the area I just moved from is that they had this young CEO program. Now, this wasn't a requirement. It's something that the kids had to apply to. And if they got accepted, once a week, they had to show up at seven o'clock in the morning and to get an educational lesson from a local business leader. So seven o'clock in the morning, they had to be there. Do you know at what time I was waking up in high school? I was lucky to roll out of bed at seven o'clock, yet alone show up wearing a shirt and tie to learn from a local business leader. I got a chance to speak to some of these young CEO high school students and I was blown away. They were so far ahead of where I was whenever I was in high school. I mean, they were ahead of me where I was in college. I mean, they were so far advanced because one, they applied themselves, but two, they had access to something that most of us don't. So why was this information only available to this small pocket of high school students? Why wouldn't this be available to every single high school student in the class? I don't know, I don't get it because with these kids, if they get one good idea from one of these business leaders and they apply that to their life and they start a successful business, now you have someone that's doing good. They're creating jobs. They're boosting the economy. They're doing something they love by offering a product and a service that they're proud of. So just imagine if more high school students were doing that, it would be amazing. And for this entrepreneur, that just makes me giddy. <laughs> I'm giddy, I'm giddy. So that's my seven. That's my top seven financial lessons I wish I would have learned in high school. And I wanna know, do you follow me? Do you believe me? Do you support me? Do you think the same thing? Do you wish that you would have been taught personal finance skills in high school? I also wanna know, maybe you were, maybe you had a class that shared some of the basics that I talked about today. If that's the case, I wanna hear from you too. 
Were you able to retain any of that information? Were you able to apply that to your life? Or was it lost because you don't remember it because of the way it was taught to you? Please share your experience in the comments below because I want to hear from you. Yeah, you, that's right. If you haven't yet, press that subscribe button and also hit that bell so that you get the notification when the next video drops because it's dropping like it's hot and it's dropping real soon. So you better watch out. This is Jeff Rose reminding you to take charge of your money because it's your life, it's your money, and only you can make it awesome. Peace. Do you hear the saw that's right next door? And the guy nailing drywall in the garage. Of course he is. I mean, he's seriously like right there. Cut the stupid piece of wood. All right, just cut the stupid piece of, oh my God, he's just gonna be here all day. He's cutting trim, that's what he's doing.